Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we have another 12-team PPR mock draft on Sleeper.app. Link in the description below if you would like to check them out. We have done a 12-team PPR mock draft from the 1st to the ninth overall pick, so we are almost done with this series. Only two more picks to go after we finish this video. Really excited to be able to say that I finally finished my first series on this channel. So if you are new here, think about hitting that subscribe button because I put out nearly daily content just like this. So if you enjoy this video, I'm sure you will enjoy my other videos. With that being said, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the draft and see what happens in this first round. So first off the board, Saquon goes, followed by CMC, Kamara, Zeke, Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams, Dalvin Cook, Derek Henry, Josh Jacobs, little strange there, Saquon going ahead of Christian McCaffrey, but it's not too absurd. If you are in multiple drafts, you should probably expect this to happen at least once. Devontae Adams going a little bit early, too early for my liking, but nonetheless, I do acknowledge that he is, in my rankings, almost the best wide receiver. I do have Michael Thomas ahead of him, but Devontae Adams is a close second, so it's not an awful pick, but I do think it was a little bit of a reach. But now we are up so we're gonna look for our pick right here and it's kind of similar to our last draft there's not a running back who i see as a ton better than anyone else my favorite running back here is miles sanders at wide receiver my top receiver is tyreek hill but i don't think he's really worth it tight end not going to go there this early so even though tyreek hill is good if i really wanted to I could get Godwin with my next pick, but I don't even think I'll do that. I think maybe I'll do that actually, but for now, who I really want is Miles Sanders. He's the best running back available in my opinion. He has a pretty safe floor along with a tremendously high ceiling, and I think that is very important. Then Joe Mixon goes, followed by Hopkins, Tyreek Hill, and Kenyon Drake. I think that's going to be a mistake by the team going with Hopkins and Tyreek Hill. Since they do not have another pick until the late third round, they are going to struggle finding a RB1. So it's our pick now, and yes, I could take Godwin, but I think that the running back value is better than the wide receiver value. Nick Chubb, Eckler, Aaron Jones, CEH, all viable options. I think Nick Chubb is overhyped, and I wouldn't even take him here. For me, it's Eckler. Aaron Jones is just a little too risky. Eckler has a little bit of a higher floor than Aaron Jones, in my opinion, not only on a weekly basis, but also on the season as a whole. I think that Aaron Jones, yes, even though he is great in the red zone, he still is touchdown dependent, and we don't know how many carries he's going to get inside the red zone, especially now that they clearly want to use A.J. Dillon. Eckler has that receiving upside and a solid receiving floor, so we're going to go with Eckler with this pick. Then Nick Chubb goes, followed by Aaron Jones, Julio Jones, Patrick Mahomes, CEH, Chris Godwin, Travis Kelsey, Todd Gurley, Lamar Jackson, Adam Thielen, Mike Evans, Kenny Galladay, George Kittle, Leonard Fournette, Allen Robinson, James Conner, Juju, and OBJ. So it is our pick once again, and I'm sorry if it seems repetitive, but every time Le'Veon Bell, Chris Carson there, I always target them here. But I do think that one of them should be available with my next pick. Unless four running backs go with the next four picks, then I think that I should get one of them. So I think I'm going to target a different position here. So I see Amari Cooper, DJ Moore. DJ Moore would be the top wide receiver here. Also, Mark Andrews, who is a good pick as well. For me, it's between... Mark Andrews and DJ Moore, but I think it would be an issue if I took Mark Andrews and then a running back with my next pick because even the wide receiver zero is an okay strategy and I have done this, I believe, twice this series. I don't want to do too many wide receiver zero strategies, so we're going to go with the wide receiver here and we're going to take DJ Moore. I like him more than Amari Cooper. Yes, Amari Cooper does have that boom potential in any given week, but so does DJ Moore, and he also has a very high floor, and I'm not worried about Bridgewater, really. If anything, Bridgewater should throw to DJ Moore 
more than Kyle Allen did. DJ Moore is not touchdown dependent at all. He is the exact opposite of being touchdown dependent. So I love the floor that he has. Okay, so if you guys watch my videos pretty often, you know that this kind of stuff happens. Since our last pick, Melvin Gordon, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, and Chris Carson all went. I even just said a minute ago, unless all four of them go, I'm going to be left with either Le'Veon Bell or Chris Carson. And sure enough, they are both ta- they are all four of them taken right before my pick. This is just what has been happening to me, and I've gotten used to it at this point. So we're not going to take a running back anymore at wide receiver. Cooper Cup, Calvin Ridley are the guys who I like there, as well as Mark Andrews. I would go with Mark Andrews normally, but just because I haven't really started out running back, running back, wide receiver, wide receiver in any drafts, I'm going to try something new and go with Calvin Ridley here because at the end of the day, I don't want to make the drafts too repetitive, like I always say. I want to kind of change things up and I want to be able to learn from this. I want to learn. I want you guys to be able to learn. So we're going to see what happens when you go running back, running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, and don't take a tight end. Because normally, if I, in the in the first four picks, I either take, I mean, I would say the majority of the time, I'll either take three running backs or two running backs and a tight end. But this time, we're going to go running back, running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, and take Calvin Ridley. Ridley almost outscored Julio Jones through week 14 because he was out for week 15 16 and 17 so julio's numbers were inflated through the entire season just because in week 15 16 and 17 he went off with ridley out but if we're just looking at when ridley was in he almost outperformed julio now he's a third year wide receiver he's going to improve i really like him this season then we see devin singletary go off the board followed by cooper cup montgomery DK Metcalf, Jonathan Taylor, Amari Cooper, he falls quite a bit in this draft. I think that is okay value right there. T.Y. Hilton, Mark Andrews, Zach Ertz, Robert Woods, A.J. Brown, Raheem Mostert, Mark Ingram, Kyler Murray, Kareem Hunt, DJ Chark, Darren Waller, and Dak Prescott. So let's take a quick recap of the first four rounds. We have Miles Sanders, Austin Eckler, DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley. I want another running back because even though I like my running backs, my receivers are so safe. So I want another running back because running backs obviously are a little more, in my opinion, important than wide receivers. And actually, that's not even my opinion. That's just kind of a fact about fantasy football. And my guy, Cam Akers, is available. I love him. I think that obviously he's a rookie, so he doesn't have a super secured workload. But his workload in this offense should be more secured than almost any other running back as a rookie this season. I mean, he has no competition. Malcolm Brown and Henderson are not that great. At least they didn't look great last season. Cam Akers just has to be decent, and he is the starter. It's his job to lose. We're going to go with Cam Akers. We saw what they did with Todd Gurley, even last season, when Todd Gurley didn't look tremendous, but they've gotten him double-digit touchdowns for the last three seasons straight, I believe. So, Cam Akers is my guy here. I love him. Then McLaurin goes, followed by Tyler Lockett, DeAndre Swift, and Keenan Allen. So we could take Geis or Dobbins, but I would like to look at the wide receivers and see what kind of value we have here. Cortland Sutton has been falling a little bit, but I still think it is a little early. Diggs, not a huge fan of. I like Devontae Parker, like Michael Gallup, but once we get into that range, Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd, we can wait until our next pick, so I don't see the value in taking one of them here. If we look at quarterback, Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson are not bad. I, I would take Russell Wilson here, but it's kind of it's kind of tricky. Let's look at tight end, knowing who I like there. So you can really go with any of these guys. You can go with a wide receiver. You can go with a running back or a quarterback. I don't like the value a ton here, but I'm going to go with running back. A lot of times I have been going with Geis, but since our third running back is still a little risky, just given the fact that he's a rookie, I'm going to take J.K. Dobbins, who kind of seems like I'd be going against what I just said. You know, I said Cam Akers is risky, so I want a safe running back, but J.K. Dobbins is pretty safe in my opinion. 
He will get carries. This team loves to run the ball, and he's a good running back. We know that to be true. He, he will get some carries. There's no doubt about it. I think J.K. Dobbins is a phenomenal player. I think he is one of the best running backs in this draft class, so I think he's safer than Geis. Normally, I go with Geis, but I'm going to go with Dobbins with this pick. Then we see Brandon Cooks go off the board, followed by Diggs, Russell Wilson, Cortland Sutton, A.J. Green, Damian Williams, Darius Geis, Drew Brees, Marquise Brown, Ronald Jones, Jarvis Landry, Deshaun Watson, Tom Brady, Evan Ingram, Gronk, Devontae Parker, Matt Ryan, and Michael Gallup gets snagged right before me. It keeps happening, guys. You can't make this stuff up. I really wanted Michael Gallup, but he didn't fall to me. But it's okay. We have guys like Samuel, like Boyd. I think both of them are good value. Samuel has fallen quite a bit. If he's there with my next pick, I might consider taking him. But for now, Boyd is the guy here. He's very safe, and he has some upside as well. If this Cincinnati offense does pretty well, Boyd has a lot of potential. But even if they just are absolutely horrendous, we already saw what Tyler Boyd can do on on an awful team. He finished as a wide receiver two, two straight seasons, 2018 and 2019. So there's no reason why Boyd shouldn't be a wide receiver two this upcoming season. So we're going to be safe here and take Tyler Boyd. Then James White goes off the board, followed by Tyler Higby, Aaron Rodgers, and Edelman. So quick look at running back. No one there really. We do have Debo Samuel, like I said, but I also noticed that Marvin Jones is about to be taken, and I really want him. Yes, I am reaching a little bit on him in the eighth round, but he's the best wide receiver in my opinion. He was a borderline wide receiver one last season in points per game, and Matthew Stafford was only healthy for eight games. He missed half the season. If he played a full 16 games, Marvin Jones would have been fantastic for the 13 games that he played in. I love Marvin Jones this season. This pick is not too hard, in my opinion. It's Marvin Jones. Then Jordan Howard goes off the board, followed by Tevin Coleman, Debo Samuel, Tariq Cohen, Sony Michelle, Marlon Mack, Keyshawn Vaughn. A little bit of a running back run right there. Will Fuller, Deontay Johnson, Alexander Madison, Matt Burita, Philip Lindsay, Hayden Hurst, Darius Slayton, Carson Wentz, Josh Allen, Hunter Henry, and Carrion Johnson. So I do think that it's time to look at quarterback. And the first thing that I notice, Matthew Stafford's there. And it feels like I've been getting him in almost every draft, and I'm completely fine with that because I love Matthew Stafford, especially since I have Marvin Jones. Some people don't like stacking a quarterback with the wide receiver, but statistically speaking, it improves your chance of winning a fantasy football championship. So you can say that it doesn't work if you want, but the stats aren't lying to you, and they are clearly saying that stacking a quarterback with a wide receiver on the same team is beneficial. Love Stafford, love this offense, love Marvin Jones. Glad to have Stafford here. I don't want to wait until my next pick because even though I do think that Big Ben and Daniel Jones are good players, I think Matthew Stafford is definitely a tier higher than them for fantasy this season. Then Latavius Murray goes off the board, followed by Jerry Judy, CeeDee Lamb, two rookies in a row, and then McCole Hardman. So I'm going to look at tight end real quick. Jared Cook, Noah Fant. I would be okay with Noah Fant. So I'll consider taking him with this pick at running back. Zach Moss, Antonio Gibson, not too much value there. At wide receiver, we have Manuel Sanders, Ruggs, Crowder, Kirk, Justin Jefferson, Anthony Miller, Rieger. Yeah, I don't really like any of these guys until Rieger, who won't be available with my next pick, but I can get Nikhil Harry and some other guys who I like. So I'm going to take Noah Fant here. Even though a lot of times I have been fading Fant, because I like Fant, but he goes quite a bit earlier than other guys who I like, like Jacecki and Goddard. If there's no value here, you might as well take Fant. I think Fant has a lot of risk, so I'm definitely going to take a backup, but Fant has a lot of potential. And if he reaches that potential, he could be a top five tight end in fantasy this season. It's really all about competition in that offense. There is a lot of, there is certainly a lot of competition. Then Zach Moss goes, followed by Emmanuel Sanders, San Francisco defense, Henderson, Buffalo defense, 
Henry Ruggs, Antonio Gibson, Baltimore defense, Jared Cook, Jamison Crowder, Tony Pollard, Pittsburgh defense, Christian Kirk, Chase Edmonds, Deshaun Jackson, Duke Johnson, Cam Newton, and Jalen Rieger. Wow, with a little more than half a round, we see four defenses go in the 10th and 11th round way too early, guys. I highly advise against that kind of stuff. So let's look at our roster and see how many bench spots we have left. So we have three, and we have one, two, three, four wide receivers, and three, four running backs. So it's pretty even. I'll probably want to draft one running back, one wide receiver, and one tight end on our remaining bench spots. So at tight end, we can wait. I'm fine with Giuseppe, Goddard, any of those guys. At wide receiver, we have Justin Jefferson, who's okay, Pittman, who's okay, but the guy who I like is Nikhil Harry. We might have to take him this round. We'll see. Then at running back, yeah, there's pretty much no one here who I like. Doesn't seem like it, at least. Armstead is okay, but I don't really think he's that great. Hyde is okay, but once again, don't think there's anything great about him. You know, normally I do take at least five running backs, but I don't think I'm going to do that this draft. I'm going to take Nikhil. Actually, Nikhil Harry will be there with our next pick. I'm going to take two backup tight ends. So we're going to see how this draft goes. So I'm going to take Jacecki with this pick, and then I should get Goddard in the 13th round, hopefully. So then Sterling Shepard goes, followed by Justin Jefferson, Justin Jackson, and New England defense. Now, Goddard might not be there with our next pick, but I feel pretty confident saying that Nikhil Harry won't be there with our next pick. So we're just going to take Nikhil Harry here and hope that Goddard falls to us with our next pick. So we take Nikhil Harry, then Chicago defense goes, followed by Anthony Miller, Michael Pittman, Boston Scott, Big Ben, Ayuk, Daniel Jones, Baker Mayfield, Anthony McFarland, Tampa Bay defense, Austin Hooper, Sammy Watkins, LA Chargers defense, Harrison Butker, Naheem Hines, John Brown, Joshua Kelly, and Joe Burrow. So luckily for us, that does in fact mean that we got our tight end who we wanted. Dallas Goddard is available. I took a little bit of a riskier player in Jacecki and a safer player in Goddard for a backup. So I know that if Jacecki busts, I still have a decent backup. But if Jacecki is a stud, which I think he definitely could be, and Goddard, but I think that Jacecki might have a higher chance of being an elite tight end this season. If that happens, we have a very, very, very promising tight end who we could trade if we need to. Then now we're just taking defenses and kickers. So you know what, Vikings defense, they're really good, and they don't have necessarily the best division for a team defense, but... Nonetheless, they are a great defense. They've been good for a while now, so I'm going to take them. Golden Tate goes, followed by Denver defense, Hawkinson, Miami Dolphins defense, A.J. Dillon, Will Lutz, San Gonzalez, Robbie Gould, Young Hoku, Brashad Perriman, Jamal Williams, Preston Williams, Carlos Hyde, Jarwin, Jake Elliott, Fairbairn, Matt Prater, Robbie Anderson, and now it is our pick. So if you are still watching this, I appreciate that you're watching this. Let me know in the comments to show me that you are, I assume, going to finish the video because there's probably only a few minutes left. So if you made it this far, thank you. And go in the comment section below and let me know your favorite kicker of the remaining guys. So just to look through, we have Fairbath, Crosby, Bailey, McManus, Matt Gay, Boswell, and those are the kickers who I assume that you would get, you guys would would take. I mean, here's here's the rest of the guys if you want to look through but I mean yeah so those those are the guys let me know who you would take if you're still watching this so let me know in the comments below who you would take to show me that you are finishing the video because I really appreciate when you guys do that so we're going to take Matt Gay because he's on a Tom Brady led offense they should be a fast paced offense and a very good offense so we took him then Drew Locke goes and Darrington Evans is the Mr. Irrelevant in this draft now, to finish off the video, let's do a quick recap of our team. Stafford at quarterback. I don't think he's injury prone. Most medical experts don't, at least for this season. No one really thinks that he's going to have an elevated injury risk this season. 
His injury last season shouldn't affect him. Then Miles Sanders, Austin Eckler, love that right there. Great receiving backs right there. Very talented running backs. Then DJ Moore and Calvin Ridley, the two best third-year wide receivers, at least the two best that I can think of. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I think DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley are the two best wide receivers going into their third year this season. So I love that. Noah Fant, risky tight end, but we do have Goddard and Jacecki to back him up, which I love. Akers at our flex, but I might start out with Dobbins or actually probably Tyler Boyd or Marvin Jones in the flex just because I feel more safe with them. But I like Dobbins. I think he's pretty safe. Boyd and Marvin Jones, love them. Boyd, we saw him produce wide receiver two numbers in a bad offense. And Marvin Jones, we saw him be a borderline wide receiver one when he was healthy last season and when Stafford was also healthy. Then the Keel Harry, just some more wide receiver depth. I think he'll be good with Stidham or with Cam Newton, but better with Cam Newton because Cam Newton has a history of liking to pass to bigger wide receivers. And Nikhil Harry is more talented than any other big wide receiver that Cam Newton has thrown to. So overall, what grade would I give this team? I would I would give this team an A minus. So this is probably on the better side of the drafts that I have done. It's not like insane in comparison to my other drafts, but it probably is better than average. I like the consistency throughout the lineup. Like the running backs, like the quarterback, like the tight ends, like the wide receivers. I like everything here, so I'd give it an A minus. Once again, it seems like every draft I'm doing is either a B plus or an A minus. So I'm trying to give you further information based on if I think it's one of the better drafts or one of the worst drafts. So I think this is probably an average draft for an A minus team. So since I got mainly A minuses and B pluses in my previous drafts, this is on the better side of the drafts that I've done. If you guys are still here, I appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like on this video because it helps me get this video out to more people so much. I really appreciate all of that stuff. And if you are new here, hit that subscribe button because I put out nearly daily content and I do so also on my Twitter account, which if you're not following me there, I highly advise you go follow me there. You can find my Twitter account in the description below. I'll have I'll have a link there to lead you to my Twitter account. I appreciate all of my followers and subscribers. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.